All right, guys, Packlock has been going crazy lately with a whole bunch of new products. I've reviewed most of them, but I got a, an email from their marketing department saying they'd come out with some lotto, some lockout tagout locks, and he's going to send me a couple of them. These are called the PL410 Pros. He, uh, as I said, he sent me two of these guys. One of them, I, I think these came from another lock picker. They, they, this one had been busted open and held together with rubber bands, and then this one is brand new in the box. I have tried to pick this for 10 minutes. The reason I tell you that is because in his email, he said the record to shoot for is 30 minutes. So I can tell you from messing with this for just 10 minutes, these are tough, tough locks. Seven pinners. Here's what the bidding on this guy looks like. And they work perfectly, as you would expect, brand new locks. Uh, but, I mean, they really sound cheap, plastic bodies. They're definitely not high security. But these cores are just outstanding for training. If you are fighting to learn how to pick serrated pins, I, th I think these are just chock full of them. So let's try it. Um, as I said, I've already spent 10 minutes. I tried to pick it clockwise the first time. So this time I will try to pick it, I guess, clock counterclockwise. Let me zoom in a little bit. It does give a little bit of feedback. And the advantage of the first 10 minutes, of course, is I kind of get the feel for the lock. Uh, I've learned that light Tension is definitely the way to go with this guy. All right, serrated pins. What do you expect, right? All right, when you pick it counter to what... I'll hold it up like this. Uh, counter clockwise as opposed to clockwise, it should bind in the opposite order. So when I was picking it clockwise, uh, the pins in the front were binding first. So let's try it like this. Try to keep it steady. And I'm trying to pick it through the camera lens. A little difficult. All springy. And there we go. Right in the very back. Number seven. Got a tiny click. Pin one. I think I got him. Let me move that. That kind of freaks me out down there like that. I don't know why, but it does. Come on. All right, I'm going to apply a little more tension. There we go. I got to click on uh, pin seven again. I saw a very slight turn. There's pin four, binding. Got a little click off of him. Three. Two springy, one is springy. Go back to four since he's last one. Okay, I got another click off four. Now two is binding. Single click, but nothing. I'm going to give another one. There we go. Pin one. Single click. If we get them open, I'll just use a spinner. I'm getting very slight counter rotation right there on pin one again. Got another click, but I didn't get any turn on the core. Looking for counter rotation or feedback of any kind. Does everybody seem springy? It seems like they're all set, but obviously not in the right place. All right, that is six. I'm lightening up on the tension. No, I think he's good. Okay, that was four again. There we go, two again. That was pin one again. Let's 
Six is still good. And I'm back where I started. Everybody seems like they're set. Nobody's giving any counter rotation or, or any feedback. Oh, okay, that was now six. I got a nice crunch, and that probably is what an overset sounds like. Pin three had popped back down. Pin two is back down. Pin one was back down. I got a little turn of the core there, but I don't think that is quite open. That was two. That was me falling off of a pin. I don't think it's open. No. That looks like counter rotation on three. Ooh, I lost the fault set. Okay, back on pin one. And I got one click. Still don't have the fault set back. I'm going to give them a little more. And there we go. All right, I may have to put a spinner on this. Come on out of there. Might have to put a spinner on him. I don't know. Oh, no, we don't. There we go. All right, guys, I'm looking at the camera. It looks like about seven minutes plus the 10 I already spent. So 17 minutes. These really are tough, tough cores. Let's go ahead and bust this guy open. I don't want to ruin a good lock when we have another identical one here. The pinning on this one, of course, is different. But that doesn't matter. We're looking actually for the driver pins. Let's push all this stuff out of the way. Get this guy up here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Pull the rubber band off, probably one of the easiest gutting. All right, come off of there. All right, looks like we have a steel pin holding this guy together. And we're missing the other one, but I don't think that matters. We are after this guy. All right, circlip, that's all there is to it. Let me find something to pry the circlip off with. Try that. All right. Try that. And the key was 50-50 chance of being right. And of course I'm wrong, of course. All right, we are gonna have a little bit of an issue here. It is a master or American sized core, but it has a weird tailpiece on it, which means we're going to have a big gap. Um, I might be able to turn him like that, maybe, and keep my fingers crossed that nothing goes wrong. All right, let's see what kind of pins we have here. Standard, oh, that was number two, actually. Standard, standard, number four was standard. Okay, all these guys were standards, and it's kind of what I expected because those really don't enter into play. The really important ones are right here. And we have a serrated, kind of what we expected. A spool. Another serrated. Another spool. So it looks like we're alternating. And I've seen this in pack locks before. Keep us confused. Another little serrated. And we've probably got a spool here. Yep, another spool. And the last one. 
looks like a standard to keep it from flopping around. And the spring, all the same. Eh, in a production lock, that's kind of what you'd expect. So let me neaten this up just a little bit. So you guys can see what we're looking at. And here we go. All right, all standards for key pins and drivers. We go, we alternate from serrated. It looks like all the serrated are the same with two cuts. And then we have those little bitty spools in there, alternating chambers. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe, stay legal. If you're looking for a training lock for serrateds and spools, you really want to develop that feel and that finesse. I'd say, I don't know what they're charging for these, but these are typically 10 or 12 bucks. Take a look at this guy. Well worth 10 or 12 bucks to get the skills out of it. Thanks, guys.